Valheim can be a brutal and unforgiving game. The world is giant, the terrain is treacherous, and the creatures, they have like no chill. Traveling anywhere is dangerous and dying in an inconvenient spot can quickly spiral into a nightmare, which is why portals are so important and if you use them right, you can streamline your gameplay, accelerate your growth, minimize danger, and according to some studies, reduce the number of rage quits up to 34%. So today, we're talking about portals, how to use them, how to name them, and how to build a quick, cute, and convenient portal hub that will turn part of your base into a trans-dimensional super superhighway. Portals at your base can quickly get out of control if you don't make some kind of structure to house and organize them, aka a portal hub. If you search online for Valheim portal hubs, you're likely to find some pretty awesome designs sporting some real epic fantasy vibes. However, pretty much all of them are circular, some with a tree in the middle, which looks good, but when I try to build something like this in my own games, I noticed a couple of three things. First, this type of design has quite a bit of wasted space. You're taking up a circle of land, but really you only use the edge of the circle, leaving a huge open gap in the middle of it, which is a great spot for a tree no doubt, but still, if you were to measure the portals per square meter ratio, the result would not be great, not to get all mathematical on you. More importantly, if you run out of spaces for your portals, you can't exactly extend the circle. The available space is quite limited, you basically have to destroy the whole thing and make a bigger one or make a second portal hub. That's why for the average player, I think the best option is not a circle, but rather a long straight design that is modular and can be easily extended, customized and can fit in many places around your base, even in narrow spaces. With a design like this, the portal per square meter ratio is much, much better, but forget the math, I'll just summarize by telling you that with this system, this space right here, this one, you can see one, not that big, this space, it can fit 40. Four zero portals, probably more than you will need the whole game. And not only will they fit, but they'll make portal travel a breeze, allowing you to easily find and reach the portal you need swiftly and smoothly. Here's how to build it. It's pretty straightforward. First, make a simple wood wall as long as you like, and then add another row on top of that. Then make a second wall parallel to the first one, four meters away or six meters away, depending how wide you want your hub to be. Add some roof tiles to unite the two walls and your portal hub is finished. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel and of course, I'm kidding, there's more to it, but this will basically work if you want. All you need to do is add portals along the walls, one every four meters or every two floor tiles. You can space them equally by trying to align the middle of each portal with the line where the two floor tiles meet. Now you got yourself a bunch of portals in a line on either side of you as you walk through the hub. Pretty simple idea, maybe even one not worth making a video about. It's not exactly the Taj Mahal, but as with most things, the details make all of the difference in the world map. First, we need some separation between the portals. There are many ways in which you can do this, from simple wood walls to dark wood dividers to some kind of an angled wall. This will help visually distinguish one portal from the other and make it more comfortable for you to enter the one that you want. What I like to do is go even further and cover up my portals almost completely, leaving only a door-like entrance to travel through. One might argue that it's a shame the portal's intricate design gets hidden away, but this makes walking through the tunnel a lot more comfortable and you drastically reduce the chance of accidentally entering the wrong portal. Adding actual doors will eliminate that chance. Fastest way to cover it up is to add a meter beam like this at the entrance and then add two meter beams the rest of the way. Then you can place one by one walls on the one meter beam and then two by two walls every second beam after that. Then walls at the top in the open spaces and of course do this on both sides. This will be faster than adding one meter walls which might be your first instinct when building this. Also the beams at the bottom of the entrance provide a bit more protection against accidental portal travel and beams outlining the entrance will look quite nice. You can build this structure around the portals or make it in a advanced as portals can be built inside their casing no problemo. And now that we got some good separation, it's time to move on to another important detail signs. Signs will help you navigate to and quickly identify the portal you want. Of course, you can always see the name of a portal by hovering over it, but I'm sure we're all busy Vikings that don't have time to carefully position our cursor over a narrow thing, especially when it's boxed in. So a larger visible sign indicating the name of your portal would be pretty useful and a good spot for it is right here inside the portal on the wall behind it. Depending on the orientation of your walls, they might be smooth, in which case I align the sign to this edge, or if the wall has ridges, then they make a nice little frame for the sign as well. To make it even more efficient, you need signs in front of you as you move through the portal hub. Otherwise, when you look for a portal, you'll be constantly swinging from left to right like a like a, a, a senator or, or something. I don't know, something about politics. You can add some half walls right here connecting the sides of your hub, which is a perfect spot for placing signs like this that you can see when you walk through. You can even add arrows to point you in the right direction, and then the sign inside the portal double confirms that you're in the right spot. You can place these signs on 
the wall, underneath the wall. You can place two layers of them for a more intricate look. Also adding beam borders might change this, so play around with it. But I like to add signs on the opposite side as well, you know, in case you get turned around. Problem is, if you place signs on either side of the same wall, they'll look different because of the ridges on one side. You can get around this by placing your half wall right here on the edge of the entrance, and then another one spun around at the edge of the next entrance with a floor tile connecting them underneath. This way your portal signs look the same coming and going. If you don't like this bump on the floor tile, you can use smaller ones to get rid of it, which you will also need to fill in the space at the edges of your tunnel. And with that, our basic portal hub unit is complete. You can make it as long or as short as you like, wider for more comfort or narrower for extreme space efficiency. You can add multiple rows of them next to each other or on top of each other, making a second floor that you can reach via a staircase that goes between the two units like this. You can place the whole thing inside of your defensive walls for some nice multi-functionality, or you can make multiple smaller hubs in different areas of your base depending on your needs, and you can use whatever naming system you want. However, you may have noticed that all my portals names are just numbers, and that's not just because I'm cursed. I think numbering your portals is the most efficient way of doing things, and here's why. My first instinct when playing Valheim was to name my portals based on what was on the other side. For instance, you make a portal next to the Elder, you might want to name it Elder. Or you make a camp for mining copper and you name that portal CP1 or something. But the problem with that is no portal is defined by just one thing. Not to get all woke on you, but each portal has multiple aspects that might be of interest to you. The Elder portal might also be a good source of blueberries or core wood, and that portal named Haldor might just be right next to a giant swamp area that holds tons of iron. Also, this type of naming can get confusing quickly, especially if you move them around. Oh, and caps lock matters? Don't even get me started. Odin only knows how many portals I abandoned in my first playthrough because I just forgot what I named them. However, if you just name your portals simple numbers in order, then for one thing it's faster to type, but more importantly, you'll never forget what you named your portals. Ever. Even if you do, you just try numbers in order until you find the right one. Ah, but if you just use numbers, how will you remember what each portal contains? I hear you ask. Well, first of all, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. I hope you liked the video. Maybe subscribe. That would be nice. Secondly, there is more space inside each portal to add several more signs indicating what might be important on the other side. Whether it's a boss, a vendor, a good collection of raspberries, a tar pit, a gray dwarf farm, or anything else that you might want to return to at some point, you got room for at least four labels on each portal. You can keep a chest of wood and coal nearby so that you can quickly write new signs when necessary. Also, whenever you place down a portal in the world and assign a number to it, you gotta update that on your map as well. Same goes if you move that portal, but hey, that's just basic map hygiene. I don't even know why I'm telling you. Anyway, let's talk a bit about the early game regarding portals because initially you have a limited amount of resources, so it's not exactly easy to build a ton of portals. That's why many players prefer to have a single portal at home and they just change the name of it depending on where they want to go. This is very useful early on, it saves you a lot of resources, but it does have some downsides like once you step through your home portal, whatever its name was, you can only return home through that same portal and not a different one that you might be closer to. This can offer limitations in certain situations. That's why I think as you progress through the game, instead of having one portal at home which you change the name of, every portal you plant in the world should have its own equivalent in your base. This simplifies travel considerably and you can even make portals in advance. After all, if you're just numbering them, you can make portals in your hub up to let's say number 16, even though you only have 7 active so far. But now, whenever you want to place a new portal at a location of interest, you just need to name it the next available number, in this case 8, and it automatically connects to your base. Simple, convenient, and easy to remember. Of course, making all of these portals costs a lot of resources, but I think it's definitely worth it considering how much smoother and safer your journey will be, and knowing you have portals and backup portals and unconnected portals is a giant advantage. It helps you with every single aspect of the game, from resource gathering to fighting to exploring to farming to building so I think it's a good idea to put in the time and gather the required materials. Fine wood is all around you, gather as much as you can, collect the seeds, plant them nearby, especially the big old oaks, or for maximum efficiency you can make a tree farm which I might make a video about. Also once you reach the plains you will have vast forests of nothing but fine wood. Grey dwarf eyes are something you kind of collect automatically as you play the game, but to speed up the process go into the black forest at night or find a spawn point and build a farm around it which is also something I might make 
make a video about. Then there's the circling cores, which are the hardest to find, but even so, there's many burial chambers in the Black Forest which are not too difficult to clear, especially with a stack breaker. However, once you reach the swamp, you have a much simpler way to get cores. Just find one or more of these fire geysers and make a farm around them, which is something I already made a video about. This one. Just dig up the area around the flame so that it's surrounded by water. Now whenever a certling spawns, it will be instantly killed, making a coal and core farm that you can visit whenever you want to collect some loot. Even better if there's a bunch of them around, just make a portal nearby, give it a number, and of course, don't forget to label it properly. As you advance through the game, getting these resources becomes easier and faster, so I say keep grinding and gathering portal materials until you can build a crapload of them. Your future viking self will thank you. I should also quickly mention that the portals you place around the world should probably probably be somewhat protected. If you find a hut or stone building, that's an ideal place for a portal, but if there's nothing around, you can make a quick building like this by first making a workbench, then a portal in front of it, then add two walls in the back, then some more on the sides, close it in with a door, and some quick roof tiles like this should be enough. In the short term, most of the time, your portals will be fine even if they're out in the open, but I wouldn't leave them out like that for too long, they can get destroyed if you leave enemies around it. And one more thing I want to mention is what I call my roaming portal. Besides all the numbered portals in the hub, I also have an extra portal that I keep unnamed inside of my house next to my bed. This is my quick access temporary portal that I use for exploration. Basically, it's a portal whose location changes constantly that I build and destroy many times as I explore the world. Because it's unnamed, it connects as soon as I build it, no need to name it, which is good in case of emergencies and when you go home, you're right in your house next to your bed, in your gear, in your food, in your chests, in case you came in encumbered. When exploring like this, if I come across an important area like a boss location or a good mining spot, then I can turn the temporary portal into a permanent one by just giving it a number, which will connect to one of the portals I built in advance in my hub. Now the untitled portal next to my bed is once again available, allowing me to get some more portal ingredients and continue my exploration with the roaming unnamed portal. In this manner, you only rarely actually need to name portals when you make them permanent, but for most of the time you're not even naming the portals you use. The reason I explain all this is because this design is mainly a concept, which you can play around with yourself and experiment with its different aspects like the separation of your portals, the placement of the signs, the arrangement of your units, the lighting and decorations, the roof, the windows, the accents and all that good stuff that can turn something that looks like a barn into a spectacular portal palace. I won't go into details about decorating, I'll let you have fun with that. You can take inspiration from this one or a look at this one which is inside a building that's identical and symmetrical with my factory. Except one contains a factory, the other contains portals. That's the convenience of this system, it fits anywhere so you can try lots of stuff. However, one thing I noticed during gameplay is that when I come home through a portal in my hub, I'm never sure if I should go left or right so it might be a good idea to have some arrows on the wall guiding you out. And if you get a weird screen stagger as you walk through the hub, just look up a bit higher, this will smooth things out and you might as well be looking there anyway, that's where the signs are. And with that, I think I've officially said all I have to say about Valheim portals. Thank you to all the people who asked for this video in the comments, I made it mostly for you. I didn't really want to make this video initially, as I thought the idea of putting portals in a line is not special enough to deserve a video, but enough people asked about a portal hub in the background of my other videos, and when I started writing the script, I found I had plenty to say about the topic, so there it is. I hope at least some of my thoughts were useful, and if you want to see more of my Valheim videos, there are a couple of portals on the screen right now that will take you there.